What's going on YouTube? This is Ray from Asian Filmist, and I'm just a guy who likes movies. Now, I don't know about you, but I believe there is this guarantee whenever you watch a movie here in the theaters in Japan, there's always going to be an anime showing, whether it be of American or Japanese origin, and there's always going to be an adaptation of a girl's comic. Now, I don't know if you're a tween like me, but I enjoy the occasional rom-com. And you get a whole mixed bag with them here in Japan. A lot of them are bad, let's, you know, let's admit it. But then you come across that one that just sticks out and then just is just entertaining. That's kind of just a step above your typical girls comic adaptation. And that's what we're going to talk about here today. Now the name of the movie we're going to talk about today is My Love Story and it came out last year in 2015. The movie stars Suzuki Ryohei, who's one of my favorite actors in Japanese cinema as of late. Now the main character of this movie is this guy named Takeo. And if you look at him, this guy looks like a 40 year old middle aged dude, always has this scowl, his hair is something out of the 70s. But don't let looks deceive you, this guy is actually a high school student. And not only that, but he's a man amongst men. Like all the male students, they adore him. But then at the same time, because of his tall stature and his ugly face, he's kind of shunned by the female students. And unfortunately for Takeo, whenever he tries to interact with any female students, they always ignore him and they always go past him and go straight for his handsome friend Makoto. So one day on his way home, he rescues his high school girl from the arms of a pervert. Now this girl's name is Rinko. And the moment Takeo saves her from the pervert's clutches, he instantly falls in love with her. But unbeknownst to him, she also falls in love with him. And in typical shoujo manga fashion, Takeo is completely unaware of her feelings towards him. And it's quite funny because of Takeo's lack of experience, lack of confidence with the opposite sex, instead of trying to pursue Rinko himself, he instead tries to hook Rinko up with his best friend Makoto. And thus begins the story of this weird roundabout love triangle. You know, on the surface, my love story sounds like your typical tween rom-com. But trust me, there's a bit more. Now let's dive into the good things about this movie. First and foremost is Suzuki Ryohei's performance. I mean, that guy was hilarious as hell. Now, I don't know if you know about Suzuki Ryohei, but the guy is probably the most macho dude in Japanese cinema today. Have you guys seen Hentai Kamen? Yeah, that was him in that suit and he's just as macho in this movie but he doesn't express his machismo with his body this time around he does it with a lot with his face now admittedly Takeo's character his archetype you actually see you actually have seen in many other anime and manga before this guy is overly masculine like seriously overly masculine he always growls has a, and has a scowl in his face this guy can do any sports this guy has superhuman like strength and speed I mean seriously there's this one scene where he hits a building and the whole building just shakes it is it was pretty amazing and he always talks a lot like this and Suzuki Ryohei keeps up through the entire movie It's quite funny. Good morning Makoto. What did you do yesterday? I think today I'm going to go to the convenience store. Oh, this Pikachu doll looks so cute He doesn't actually say any of those words But you know just to paint a picture of the way he talks Takeo is also the kind of macho archetype that always stares off into the sunset while squinty eyed like this and just self-reflecting you know, as any man should do while staring off into the sunset. Now Suzuki, he does all of these things and hams it up and embraces the ham to the fullest. You just can't help but just laugh at everything Takeo does. He is without a doubt the most entertaining part of my love story. The other characters were typically charming and adorable. You had Makoto, who at first you think might come off as is the typical cool and cold friend. But then throughout the movie, you get to learn his backstory and his reason for doing things the way he does. And then he becomes quite likable. They had Rin the love interest of the story and she was cute and adorable and they found the perfect actress to portray Rinko in the form of Nagano Mei. Now other than the characters, the most enjoyable part of this movie was the overload of food porn. Now the food porn comes in droves and that is because Rinko, the main girl, she is a cooking nut. She learns all these recipes and it's really all meant to impress Takeo. And it's funny, Takeo doesn't realize that. Part of the comedy comes and Rinko cooks for Takeo and Makoto and, and you know it's really all for Takeo but Takeo thinks it's all for Makoto and he thinks he's just along for the ride and he's enjoying all the food that she puts out and every single bit of food that Rinko cooks up you will start to have cravings for I guarantee it now I only had a few good things to say about the story but trust me those few good things carry on for the majority of the film now I know what many of you might say I mean it's an adaptation of a girl's comic of course it's not meant to be a good movie after all they make these stories for a certain demographic which might not include a guy named Ray, but you know, I'm still gonna talk about them. So here are 
are some things that I felt were kind of lacking. First off, everything was very sugary. It was a lot of fluff. I mean, no character or, and no relationship was very complex in this movie. Everything was created for the sole purpose of light entertainment and just to experience a very feel-good story. And even though the center of the story is a male character, it is actually, you know, keep in mind, it is actually a girl's comic. So that being said, my love story contains so many tropes that is in the very formula of these girls' comic stories. First of all, a lot of the tension centers on unrequited love. And the unrequited love leads into a lack of confidence within the main characters and then it leads into miscommunication where basically one character would say something and then the other character would misinterpret that in of course a comedic way but almost always it would lead to Rinko being flustered and then just running away not even trying and then after running away Rinko would consult with Makoto about what's wrong what's happening why she's feeling sad then Makoto would, would consult with her and then give her the boost to jump back into the game of trying to get at Takeo and of course Takeo is coolest to the the whole entire thing. Some of the centerpieces of, of, the, of his comedic reactions involve him saying, you know, it's all right that she's gone. It's for the best. And he says this while, of course, staring into the sunset or staring off into the distance and reflecting. Uh, there's a lot of running away and reflecting in this movie. Another thing I have to say, but wait, before that, you know, of course, this movie is not grounded in reality at all. I mean, Takeo is, of course, a walking caricature. And that being said, Rinko is kind of a caricature herself in the sense that she is just too perfect. Too perfect in the sense that Rinko is that girl that every nice guy would put on the pedestal. You know, she's cute. She's loyal. She's lovable. She works hard. She cooks. You now, given the way each of the main characters were made in this story, it's almost debatable as to whether this story was meant to be a boys' comic or a girls' comic. You know, people swear to me that this is a girls' comic, but I swear to them, no, nah, this is a boys' comic. You see, everything was made so that way it caters to a male demographic. More specifically, the demographic of nice guys. And the last girls' comic trope that this movie contains is the melodrama. Of course, you have to have melodrama in a romantic story, but I don't know. I just have this thing when the source of the melodrama is miscommunication or something that could have been solved if you, one of the characters would just say, hey, what's up? But you know, a lot of Japanese love stories, a lot of them are centered around miscommunication, I feel. Or just the characters saying 20% of what they actually feel and the other 80% they're just keeping it and thinking and letting it kill themselves with it. Characters come to conclusions without really even confirming anything in the first place. But you know, the miscommunication, you know, it's the source of the melodrama, it's also the source of the comedy. So you have a little bit of both and if you are really into the kind of melodrama, that's in romantic comedies, then, then this movie has it for you. But you know, what makes my love story great is that it takes these tropes from girls' comic stories and makes them a ton more entertaining than how they are usually represented. I mean, Takeo is so entertaining that you'll almost forgive all these tropes and just laugh at them rather than cringe at them most of the time. I mean, I don't know, Takeo just makes this movie for me. I can watch Suzuki Ryohei as Takeo and forget at all the cliches and all the tropes that this movie has. But the bottom line is, you know, it's a cliche teen rom-com, but the charm and comedic actions of its main characters will make the viewing experience a lot of fun. I definitely recommend this movie for those who are looking for a light and funny rom-com and who just want overall a feel-good experience. But you know, I can't recommend this movie for those looking for a romantic story involving complex characters and relationships. And I don't recommend this story for those who are, you know, jaded in the way they see romantic stories on film. Anyway, those are my thoughts on my love story. What did you guys think? Whatever your thoughts are leave a comment below and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to Asian Filmers for more reviews and discussions on Asian films. You can also chat with us on our Facebook and Twitter pages and if you subscribe to our email newsletter you can receive a free copy of our ebook The 108 Asian Films for new fans to watch. And once again my name is Ray you can find me on Twitter and my Twitter handle should be right down here. And that's about it guys. Alright everyone I'm about to watch another movie. I'll be back soon. Promise. <laughs>